Hi guys and welcome, Gnembon here and today I would like to talk about a small but annoying bug that is actually being removed from the game as we speak. I mean it has already been fixed by Gram from Mojang and will be released in the upcoming snapshot. And the fix is to bring consistency to redstone torches. It's not the bug that crashes the game or destroys items, but it's one of these bugs that may confuse even the most advanced redstoners and cause tons of frustration and wasted time, trying to fix something that should work in the first place but it doesn't for some odd reason. But there are also two other reasons for me to talk about this one in particular. First is that there is a cool story attached to this one, and the second is that the bug itself is nice and clean, and a good example to show the steps how to fix technical issues in general. But first the story. During the summer I was flying from America to Europe and thought to myself, let's spend this time doing something fun, let's do some Minecraft. But the games take lots of power to run and there was no power on the plane. So I thought, let's do something else that's fun as well, bug fixing. And since this was one of the bugs that bugged me personally, I thought let's squish it. You don't need tons of power to plow through the code in a text editor, so it was better fitting the situation than playing this game. So I was bug fixing and by the time I landed in Europe the mystery of redstone torches was solved, thanks to the lack of available power on the airplanes. To fix most technical issues, just don't try these steps with personal issues though, you need to follow these steps. First is to realize we have an issue. It's a simple one but if you don't know what the problem is, it's not gonna fix itself. Then we have to reproduce the problem so we can analyze it further. And that's why I'm not recommending these steps for solving any personal issues. The next step is to understand the basic mechanics around it. Then to verbalize the test case by adding excessive amounts of extra information to it. And then going through this extra information you are getting, we can realize what's odd and unexpected. And then the last step is to find a way to make the odd and unexpected disappear. And if we succeed, we should have found the root cause of the problem and the solution. To realize there is an issue is not that hard. Uh, there, here is a bunch of examples that don't make too much sense. Powering two torch towers next to each other from the same source should result in both of them working at the same time. A bunch of redstone torches attached to the same wire should flicker the same way, but they clearly don't. The presence of this redstone dust here shouldn't affect this torch here, but it clearly does. All of the ex examples here so far were using four game tick signals, but it still can be an issue for shorter signals. Here is a three game tick signal that if you remove this torch, it works again for no reason. And there is here is an example of a special two game tick signal that works with torches. Again, this torch here should have no effect on it, but for some reason it does. All of these cases here can be used as a basis to track down the issue as they are reproducible, but we are interested in the simplest case because it's easiest to analyze. And in this case it is this one. As we probably will be dealing with update issues, less redstone dust means typically less updates to analyze. In this case the problematic torches are activated through repeaters only, so it should be the cleanest test case of them all. The basic mechanics of a redstone torch is as follows. A torch can be in a valid or invalid state. It's valid when it's lit and the block it's attached to isn't powered or if it's off and then the block it's attached to is powered. The invalid state is when both torch and the block are on or off at the same time. And the events around the torch work as follows. When it receives a notification from a neighboring block it checks if it's in a valid state. If not, schedules an update on itself in two game tick time. Upon updating, checks again if it's still invalid, and if so, toggles its state. In simple case it works just fine. We apply power to a block Torch is attached to. Torch realizes it is in an invalid state, schedules an update into ticks, evaluates itself again, turns off and stay off until power goes away. Then schedules another update and in two ticks flips into a valid state again. But in this case we have a longer signal and only one Torch, so let's look at our test example. First, both torches are notified about the power. First the right one, then the left one. We assume for now that the order of these was random and of how they got updated first will actually continue later on. At the end of the tick we end up with both blocks powered and both torches will update scheduled in the next two ticks. In the second tick, first torch, torch B, will evaluate its state first and will turn off. But by doing it, it will notify the other torch, which is still in the invalid state, which will cause it to schedule an extra update in fourth tick. Then the original update comes along, which turns the torch off. The torch B is also notified about that, but it's already in a valid state, so it ignores it. 
In the fourth tick, first the power from the blocks below the torches is removed because repeaters scheduled it already four ticks ago, so they are first. And respective torches are informed about this as well. Which caused them to schedule another update at tick 6. But in the same tick, we have this rogue update from tick 2 that turns the torch A back on a little prematurely, which ends up it being turned on at the end of that tick. In the next two ticks, the torch B turns on due to its previous update as expected, and torch A simply ignores its update. So now we know what's going on, so it's technically not a bug, it's just a very quirky update order dependent behavior, which unlike pistons, haven't seen anybody making use of it or making use food in general. So how to prevent it? What you can do is to prevent torches to schedule updates if there's already an update waiting on them, especially if it happens in the same tick. Thankfully, we have the technology to do that as the list of scheduled updates is known for each tick and adding this extra check should help with this issue. And here is the event log after applying this fix as as we can see both timelines for torches A and B are exactly the same. Ok, so now what we can do is to go to our previous test cases and verify that everything was just fine. As you can see, no issues here. No issues here. This also works just fine with or without the dust. Our 3 game signal works just fine as well. With or without the torch. And our special 2 tick signal for torches still works. All fixed. Now I can even run tileable dropper elevators at 7200 items per hour, which is the torch burnout limit, and without them getting stuck, so that's awesome. Also, I am happy to mention that at this point we have managed to set up some sort of a line of communication with Moyang that allowed our bug fixing hobby not to go in vain, and you can already see signs of it in several bug fixes already implemented in the game, with Theosip's fines for root cause of hopper duping, and XCOM's fix for ghost blocks, and there is hopefully much more coming in as we can see that many more bug fixes and improvements are already waiting and ready, and the more of them end up in vanilla game, the less work we will have to put in maintaining the carpet mod. Yay! I hope you have found this video interesting, maybe not amusing, but informative at least. Don't forget to leave me a like, subscribe if you are new, and let me know in the comments what is your least favorite bug currently in the game that you would be happy not to see anymore. So, see you in the next one, bye bye!